Hi folks, and welcome to this video on thermoregulation. Okay, very posh, fancy pants way of saying how do we maintain all our body's methods to maintain core temperature. Okay, as you might be aware, might not be aware, we've got to keep our core. And if I use this guy running in this diagram, the core is this here. Okay, your torso, your chest, your head. We've got to keep all those areas at 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. Above that, we're going to get heat stroke. Below that, we're going to get things like, you know, pneumonia, hypothermia, things like that. Um, so, you know, you might know that average room temperature is about 21 degrees. So, we're not, you know, it's quite a big difference. You know, your extremities, your arms, your legs, they don't have to be 36 to 38 degrees C, but your core does for you to stay alive, for you to, to function properly, okay? So what we've got, I'm gonna use this diagram as a little bit to identify the four methods of heat exchange, okay, in order to keep our body temperature at 36 to 38 degrees Celsius, okay? So, First of all, we have thermoceptors dotted all around our body, okay? Just as we had chemoreceptors that detect changes in CO2 and baroreceptors that detect changes in blood pressure, thermoreceptors detect changes in body temperature. And they feed all this information to the medulla in the brain, in particular the thermoregulatory centre, the part of the brain that is responsible for thermoregulation, maintaining our core at 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so let's have a look at the various ways that we exchange heat in and out of the environment. Now there are four methods of heat exchange we're really interested in, in terms of uh, the human body operating in the environment. Remember the key thing here is, as you exercise, your body's gonna generate heat. That excess heat, has to be got rid of. Okay, you've got to get rid of it. So what we're looking at here are the various ways that we can exchange heat. Now, you know, there's, there's a few things I'm gonna mention here that are different to this diagram. So don't say this diagram as being the absolute, oh, I've got to memorize this. There's variations of this. For example, okay, conduction, as we've got down here. Conduction is heat loss from the skin into objects. So the example that you've got in this picture is this guy is conducting heat from his skin into that backpack but equally you'll have conduction down here conducting heat into his shoes and then into the ground so as soon as the body temperature starts to increase we will conduct heat into objects that we are in contact with okay now in terms of radiation this is what i mean about don't taking this um you know example as gospel this picture that i've got here Radiation, okay, is heat lost by infrared, i.e. a warm object releases heat into a colder environment. So obviously the sun radiates heat into the atmosphere on Earth because the sun is very hot and the Earth's atmosphere is a lot colder in comparison. But equally, this guy here could also radiate heat and will also radiate heat out of himself into the environment, okay? Like you've got that infrared radiation heat exchange. Why? Because if, if he particularly if his core is 36, 38, and this environment is below that temperature, which for the vast majority of places on Earth, it's going to be, okay? This guy is also going to radiate heat away from him, okay? So radiation is heat loss by infrared or warm objects releasing heat into a cold environment. Think about what we have in our homes, radiators, okay? They're called radiators because they are a warm object that radiates heat out into the cooler environment surrounding it. Convection then is heat lost by the movement of gases. You know, it's typically why we're told to wear those things, hats, uh, in cool environments, because heat will naturally convect off the top of our head in gas form off into the atmosphere, but it also obviously comes out of our breath. Any area of exposed skin, you will naturally convect heat off to into the environment because the, the heat will rise as a gas off of the warm skin into the cooler environment. And finally, evaporation is heat lost by liquid, okay, water vapour, i.e. sweating. So again, it could come out of our breath, but it's much more likely again to come off. You know, you spend a lot of energy getting water onto the skin so we can then heat that skin. Uh, sorry, then get the heat through to the skin. It gets absorbed by the water droplets and then it evaporates away. As the water evaporates, it, the, uh, it takes the heat with it and allows us to cool our core temperature down, okay? 
With that in mind, I'm just going to draw a really quick diagram to help try and explain a little bit of this. Because there's another process as well. There is the surface of the skin, and there are some hairs on the arm of your skin. Okay, what we're going to do is draw very quickly a few water droplets, beads of sweat, if you want to think of it like that. And then underneath it, we've got a blood vessel. Okay, carrying blood in this direction, but it doesn't really matter. What other strategy have we got, particularly in a warm environment? Well, we've got vasodilation. Now, remember what vasodilation is. It's when the blood vessel, the lumen, widens. It gets wider. So this wall here is now going to vasodilate. Okay, it's going to get wider. And what that means is that the heat can now conduct onto the surface of the skin much easier into the beads of sweat. And the beads of sweat can evaporate away and take the heat with it. Okay? The opposite is true when we're in a cold environment. Okay? What will happen is the blood vessel will vasoconstrict. Okay? So it, the line will not, you know, the wall of the blood vessel will now drop back there. Now that's a much thicker layer of skin for the heat to try and conduct through. It can't do it as effectively and therefore we don't lose as much heat. Hence why we go pale when we're cold and we go red when we are warm. So here's another little diagram, you know, showing the key things here. And as you can see, it's not the best diagram in the world, but as you can see, there's your comfortable range, 36 to 38 degrees Celsius. As your temperature starts to increase, we don't want it to go two degrees above that. So what we'll do is our blood vessels will vasodilate. Okay, they will move closer to the surface of the skin. We will sweat and lose heat through evaporation. Uh, and temperature of the extremities closer to the body core temperature, i.e. we'll try and spread the heat as evenly as possible all around the body to try and lose it more effectively. When the temperature starts to drop, our blood vessels will vasoconstrict. We will reduce blood flow to the extremities. You notice the hands and feet are getting very, very cold, hence why they always get very cold when the temperature drops first. We will also start to do muscular contractions so that we start to shiver. So that's going to increase body temperature. So one final quick thing. So in a cold environment, our strategies are for our hairs to stand on end. But a lot of people don't know why that is. What it is, is as your hairs stand on end, they will trap a very thin layer of warm air close to your skin surface. Now, it's not going to make you feel that warm, but it's going to have a, a slight difference. It's going to uh, trap slightly warmer air close to the body and maintain a little bit of temperature. You're also going to shiver, okay, which is going to increase muscular contractions, which is what's going to generate heat in the first place. But all crucially, you're going to vasoconstrict your blood vessels. The blood vessel is going to close or get clo you know, closed down a little bit, particularly towards the skin surface and the extremities. Hence why you've got this blue line going all the way around the body and towards the feet and hands. And that's going to maintain more warm blood around the core, which is where we need it. So finally then, when we're in a warm environment, we've got the opposite. We've got vasodilation that can take place. So we open the blood vessels towards the skin surface. Hence why there's no blue line around this body. And we increase blood flow to the extremities to try and get rid of as much heat as possible by getting it to all the skin surface. Um, we sweat, and that allows us to lose heat through evaporation, or more effectively through evaporation. And we can also remove layers of clothing, and that's going to increase convection. Remember, the more areas of exposed skin, the more we can convect heat as a gas. Okay, I hope you found this video useful, folks.